The anti-graft body CIA has intensified investigations into the alleged corruption during the installation of Golden Jalhari at the temple of Pashupati Nath. Earlier, a report by the Auditor General's office had pointed out that about 11 kilograms of gold was found short after the preliminary investigation. The Jalhari was installed about a two and a half years ago as per the instruction of the then Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli. After the fake Bhutanese refugee scam, it could be another back-to-back -back corruption scandal to rock the nation if preliminary report is substantiated. Good morning, I'm Sarah Chitrakar and these are the headlines of the hour. The weight of gold of the Jalahari installed at the temple of Pashupati Nath has been calculated as 107 kilograms and 468 grams. The CIA to conclude the probe with all evidences. It's International Day Against Drug Abuse and Illicit Trafficking. Various programs held across the country to root out these social ills. Greek Conservative leader Kyriakos Mitsotakis trounces his centre-left rival in the second election in a month, says he has a strong mandate for reforms. And Carlos Alcaraz clinches Queen's Club Championship title, returns to number one of world ranking, Alexander Bublik pockets Halle Open. The weight of gold of the Jalhari installed at the temple of Pashpati Nath temple has been calculated as 107 kilograms and 468 grams. The weighing was calculated till late last night and Corruption Watchdog, the Commission for Investigation of Abuse of Authority or CIAA has intensified its probe into the alleged corruption during the installation of the Golden Jalhari at the Temple of Pashpati Nath. The security at the temple premises was beefed up yesterday as the entry of devotees into the temple was blocked due to, to carry out the investigation. A team from the CIAA, which had launched an investigation into the alleged corruption for over a year, conducted the weighing of the Jalhari installed at the temple. Earlier, a report by the Office of the Auditor General had pointed out that some 11 kilograms of gold was missing in the total weight. The weighing yesterday was conducted in the presence of representatives from the Gold and Silver Dealers Association, Department of Mines and Geology and Quality Control Department. Then Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli in January 2021 had directed for the installation of the Golden Jalhari worth 1 billion rupees, while the government had provided 300 million rupees to carry out the directive. The Pashupati Area Development Trust had added 500 million rupees as the Golden Jalhari weighing 108 kilograms was installed. However, the CIAA initiated the investigation as some foul play was suspected during the installation of the Jalhari. Meanwhile, the devotees are allowed to enter the temple premises from today. Investigations into the alleged corruption during the installation of a golden Jalhari at the Pashupati Nath temple has finally gained momentum. The corruption watchdog CIA has been investigating the corruption charges for the past one and a half years by keeping the issue of the missing 11 kg gold at the center. The CIA is now trying to conclude the report by weighing the amount of gold used and its quality. The Pashupati Nath temple premises that is usually thronged with visitors was vacated yesterday at around 3 in the afternoon. The CIAA team entered the temple premises along with representatives from the Department of Mines and Geology, Department of Archaeology, Security Forces among others. This probably is the first incident in the country's history that a team led by the corruption watchdog had entered the Pashupati Nath temple. It may be recalled that as per the government directive, the Pashupati Area Development Trust formed a committee under the then treasurer Milan Thapa as the Jalhari was installed on 23rd February 2021. However, the golden chain that held on to the Jalhari was broken within three days of installation, which sparked speculations of corruption. Subsequently, a case was filed at the CIAA citing that the total weight of the Jalhari was shot by about 11 kilograms. Thapa was later appointed as the member secretary of the PADT as he ignored repeated calls by the CIAA to clarify on the issue. 
Thapa, meanwhile, reached a committee under the National Assembly where he denied any corruption and his involvement, claiming that he was ready to be hanged if any financial embezzlement was proved in the installation of the Jalhari. Even as the rep report created by the fake Putinese refugee scam is yet to be subsided, this could be another major back-to-back -back scandal to rock the country. The International Day Against Drug Abuse and Trafficking is being celebrated today with the theme People First, Stop Stigma and Discrimination, Strengthen Prevention. The day is being observed by organizing various programs including rallies, interviews and street dramas to spread awareness regarding harmful effects of drug abuse. All three tiers of government has organized various programs to spread awareness about the damages caused by drug abuse. According to government data, those between the age group 20 and 30 have been the most affected by drug abuse. 96% of drug abusers have said that they had started it under peer pressure. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Home Affairs has stressed on conducting campaigns against drug abuse targeting schools. A survey conducted at rehabilitation centers showed that a number of children had started drug abuse at very young age of 12 and 13. Police have attributed the increase in crimes to drug abuse. A recent study shows that there are 130,000 drug abusers in the country. Generally, students that excel in the academics pursue engineering and medical studies, among other courses. However, majority of the students fail the license examination of these subjects. This has raised question on the quality of education, training and examination system. Experts have recommended immediate adoption of required measures to address the issue. Engineering courses are available in six universities in Nepal. The number of students that have completed this course from foreign countries, including India, is equally high. However, only 801 out of 2,374 examinees passed the license examination conducted by the Nepal Engineering Council, which is merely 33.8%. According to the result, the students of Midwest, Sudurpashchim, Purvanchal and Pokhara universities are weak in their academics, while the rate of students that have passed the examination is high in Capitals, Thribun University. Only 41 out of 404 students who have completed their studies abroad, including India, have been able to pass the license examination, which is only 10%. The total rate of students who had passed the previous license examination was 28%. The scenario of the license examination for MBBS and BDS is quite similar. Only 38% of the total 17,009 students passed the license examination conducted by Nepal Medical Council last month. The large number of students failing the license examinations of technical subjects has raised question on the education system of the institutions as well. The feeble monitoring by the regulating body has resulted in degrading quality of education. The government and the universities must be serious towards uplifting the standard of education for technical subjects. In our Public Voice segment, we have asked people in several provinces why hasn't the government taken initiatives to relocate settlements that are at risk of floods and landslides. Let's take a look at what they had to say. Public voice. Ruling coalition partner Janata Samajbadi Party is set to begin discussions on the proposed party statute from today. 
The statute convention of the party began from yesterday at Nepal Academy Hall, while group discussion on the statute will begin from today. Preparations have been made to engage 10 groups in discussions on the draft of the amended statute and endorse it tomorrow. The draft of the amended statute includes a directly elected executive president and the parliament with proportionate representation. Likewise, the agendas include recognition to ethnic identity, good governance and autonomy. Party chairperson Yadav had demanded to rewrite the constitution when it was promulgated in the year 2015. Likewise, at least 40% of the central committee members must be youth. Former chairpersons will be appointed as the instant and senior leader after the chairperson. The statute convention, which is being attended by 800 members from across the country, will continue for three days. Time now for international update. Kyriakos Mitsotakis, leader of Greece's centre-right New Democracy Party, has won a second four-year term as Prime Minister. Mitsotakis is now set to return to the Prime Minister's office in a stronger position with his party's resounding victory in Sunday's elections, which were dominated by financial stability and cost-of-living issues. With nearly 96% of the vote counted, New Democracy had garnered over 40% of the vote. Its main opposition, leftist party Syriza, trailed far behind in the preliminary results with over 17%. A total of eight parties, including centrist Pasok Kinal and leftist KKE, have already crossed the 3% threshold to enter the Greek parliament. Smaller fringe parties, ranging from the far left to the far right, have also made significant gains. It was the second general election in Greece in five weeks, after New Democracy scored a victory in May, surpassing all expectations, but fell short of winning an outright majority. Mitsotakis, at the helm during the COVID-19 pandemic and Europe's energy crisis, had positioned himself as a safe pair of hands to boost growth in difficult global circumstances. His government staged a stunning turnaround in the economy, now on the brink of returning to investment grade on the global market for the first time since it lost market access in 2010. Time now for Sports Update. Sports News. Bangladesh have defeated Maldives 3-1 in yesterday's first match at the SAF Championship. It was Maldives who opened the scoring in the first half as they led after 17 minutes. The goal for Maldives was scored by Hamza Mohammed. However, Bangladesh came back strongly into the match as they scored the equaliser shortly before the first half. The equaliser was scored by Rakib Hussain in the 43rd minute. Bangladesh scored in the 67th minute to take the 2-1 lead. The goal scorer was Tariq Kaji. Bangladesh scored again through Sheikh Mor Morsalini just before the long whistle to seal the match 3-1. Lebanon thumped Bhutan 4-1 in the second match played earlier yesterday evening at the SAF Championship. In the match played at Bangalore's Kantirova Stadium, Lebanon scored in the 10th minute of the match when Mohamed Sadiq scored off a rebound. Lebanon doubled the lead through Ali Alhaz in the 23rd minute. Time now for our segment, Public Pulse, where you text us with your opinion. Public Pulse. Here's the question. What should be done to improve the standard of Nepali football? Your options are A, increase investment, B, prioritize the production of players, and C, adequate preparations. Voting is on. Type any WS, select your option, A, B, or C, and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. Before wrapping up, here's a look at the top stories once again. The weight of gold of the Jalahari installed at the temple of Pashupati Nath has been calculated as 107 kilograms and 468 grams. The CIA to conclude the probe with all evidences. It's International Day Against Drug Abuse and Illicit Trafficking. Various programs held across the country to root out these social ills. 
Greek Conservative leader Kyriakos Mitsotakis trounces his centre-left rival in the second election in a month, says he has a strong mandate for reforms. And Carlos Alcaraz clinches Queen's Club Championship title, returns to number one of world ranking. Alexander Bublik pockets Halle Open. That's all for the moment. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.